Good day, dear children. Today we are going to learn a new story, the Chinese statue. It's written by Jeffrey Archer. Jeffrey Archer is a terrific story writer. Some of his works are real thrillers. Now, this Chinese statue about is about the journey of a statue that Mister, or uh, not Mister, Sir Alexander Heathcote. had purchased from china in 1871 and its journey over about 100 years uh, the story begins with the auction of the chinese statue let's move on to the story the chinese statue by jeffrey archer the little chinese statue was the next item to come under the auctioneer's hammer auctioneer you know who the auctioneer is what about auction do you know that yeah lela so auctioneer is a man who calls out uh, the first call and second call for whether this amount is okay that person and once he come brings down the hammer then the value of that item is fixed lot 103 cost to those quiet murmurings that always precede the sale of a masterpiece so the chinese statue was a masterpiece and before a masterpiece is being called taken out for auction when it is a masterpiece that is being called out the people will start murmuring oh who was this why did they come to sell it like uh, gossip gossiping about the condition of the person who is auctioning it there will be a lot of murmurings or maybe about the value of that uh, chinese statue value of that uh, um, uh, item that is being auctioned it can also be that gossip about that or stories about that or myths about that so the murmurings was there which shows that it was a valuable one the point that you there are three points that you should notice in the first paragraph i'll say when i end the paragraph the auctioneer's assistant held up the delicate piece of ivory you know what is ivory yeah the tusk of an elephant so the chinese statue the material of chinese statue is ivory it's an ivory chinese statue for the packed audience packed audience there were a lot of people there it was a crowded audience to admire while the auctioneer glanced around the room to be sure he knew where the serious bidders were seated now what do, what do you mean by serious bidders some have just come to see what is happening there they they don't have the money nor uh, even if they they nor do they have any intention of buying it but there are some people who have actually come here to buy the auction items so those are the serious bidders bidders means one who puts forward the uh, amount the value of these uh, statues one who says that i will buy for this much amount I studied my catalog and read the detailed description of the piece and what was known of its history. So, when these bidders come in, they are given a catalog. In each, in in the catalog, each item that is to be auctioned, a description of that item is given. Now, lot under lot one hundred and three, he just read out what was the description given about the item. The three words that you should remember in the first paragraph is. the chinese statue was made of ivory it had come out for auction and the uh, it was lot 103 lot 103 a chinese statue of ivory chinese statue is out there for auction these are the three things that has to be noticed in the first paragraph and it was a masterpiece because people spoke about it now the second paragraph The statue had been purchased in Ha Li Chuan in 1871. Important line, underline it. Where was the statue purchased? In Ha Li Chuan, when 1871. Those two points are very important. And was referred to as what? Saw the buys. What is saw the buys? Saw the buys is an auction auctioneer. There is there are another firm, Christie's, a famous London auction. Uh, firm auctioning firm quaintly described as a property of a gentleman quaintly means very discreetly very 
like a very uh, beautifully they have done it is the property of a gentleman the gentleman's name is not revealed which means that the man must be an aristocrat Arist who is an aristocrat a high five person a person who is having a good position in the society uh, and uh, from a good family and this person did not want to disclose the name he didn't want to disclose that he had come to that uh, condition that he had to sell the family heirloom did not wish to admit that he was having to sell off one of the family heirlooms i wondered if that was a case on this occasion and decided to do some research to discover what had caused this little chinese statue to find its way into the auction room on that thursday morning over 100 years later so when is this taking place oh, almost in 1971 so this uh, statue was purchased in 1871 from ali so the three points that you should remember from the second paragraph the statue was purchased from ali chuan in 1871 and it was being auctioned by Sotheby's. These three points you have to learn. Now, lot number 103 declared the auctioneer. What am I bid for the magnificent example of? He is just starting and then uh, the narrator is beginning to say the story of Chinese statue. Next paragraph, there are few points that you should note down. Almost six points you should note down. Very, very important. Before noting down the question, please write down the noting down these points. Please write down the question. How does the author illustrate that Sir Alexander Heathcote was an exact man? Yeah. Now, what do you mean by exact man? Punctual, fastidious. It can be. Either uh, uh, all these words can be used. It means he was very punctual. Why he said an exact man? That is the first point. Sir Alexander Heathcote, as well as being a gentleman, was an exact man. Very punctual. He was exactly six foot three and a quarter inches tall. Quite a tall man. Six foot, more than six foot three inches, quarter. Six foot three inches quarter is the height of Sir Alexander Heathcote, which shows that he is a really tall man. Now, why he is punctual? Why is it to be punctual? Rose at seven o'clock every morning was regular. He is, he is a regular person. Every day, if there is seven o'clock, he will be up and about. Joined his wife at breakfast to eat. Now, what if he ate? He ate the same ingredients. He ate the breakfast made of the same ingredients every year, every day when he lived. It was one boiled egg cooked for precisely four minutes. That means the maybe the middle yellow part would, wouldn't have been completely hard. It will be little, little, little watery, watery. So, one boiled egg. Cooked exactly, precisely for four minutes. Two pieces of toast. You know what is a toast? Bread. Uh, just heat it up. Maybe little butter or uh, ghee applied on each side. Toast it. With one spoonful of Cooper's marmalade. Marmalade is something like, uh, like uh, mayonnaise, jam, uh, butter. A, a thing that is spread on the bread marmalade and drink one cup of china tea so what was his breakfast every day one boiled egg cooked for precisely four minutes two bread toast uh, with cooper's marmalade then one cup of china tea he would then take a hackney carriage yeah drawn by horses definitely from his home to Cadogan Gardens at exactly 8.20. He starts at 8.20. He starts from here and then arrive at the foreign office at promptly 8.59. 8.20 he starts, 8.59 he reaches, returning home again on the stroke of 6 o'clock. So what are the points? Uh, narrator has used to prove that he is an exact man. First, he gets up exactly at seven o'clock every morning he takes 
the same ingredients as breakfast every day what are those ingredients a boiled egg cooked for precisely 4 minutes uh two pieces of toast taken with copper's marmalade then uh what is the next a, a cup of chai tea so same breakfast he starts for his office at 8:20 he reaches there precisely at 8:59 he returns home at 6 o'clock every day this was his routine so it shows that he was an exact man so first page is over i hope it's clear we are coming to the next page page 60 before starting the page 60 i want you all to note down this question depict the career graph of sir alexander heathcote in words depict a verbal career graph of sir alexander heathcote sir alexander had been exact from an early age as became the only son of a general so he was the son of a general that must be the reason general means uh, usually soldiers are very regular in their habits so maybe because of being the son of a general he wa- he became a punctual man he got these habits but unlike his father he chose to serve his queen in the diplomatic service he said i don't want to fight he didn't go for fighting diplomatic service means in the office so official duties another exacting calling so he did, like he did not become a soldier he became queen's dip, joint queen's diplomatic service now note down the points how the, his career graph he progressed from a shared desk at the foreign office in whitehall that is his first step shared desk means there were two persons there was one desk and two persons were sitting in the desk uh, means uh, he was not in a high position he was under somebody shared desk Uh, at the foreign office in whitehall first step second step to third secretary in calcutta he the uh, the uh, present kolkata was then known as calcutta so third secretary in calcutta second step to second secretary in vienna third step who is he secretary to secretary to the queen or queen's man to the first secretary in rome fourth step to deputy ambassador in washington fifth step and finally the minister in peking sixth step write in order so that you will remember this is his career graph now he was delighted when mr gladstone invited him to represent the government of in china as he had for some considerable time taken more than an amateur interest in the art of the ming dynasty So why was Alexander delighted to become the minister of China because he had an interest in this Ming dynasty he liked the chinese history he was interested in the history of china so and he was interested especially in the ming dynasty so he was very happy that he, why he can directly observe otherwise he was he had seen it through he had just read it or seen the pictures now he can directly observe all those things this crowning appointment in his distinguished career would afford him what until then he would have considered impossible an opportunity to observe in their natural habitat some of the great statues paintings and drawings which he had previously been able to admire only in books that's the reason why he was happy so that part is over career graph you have written write down the next question please what was sir alexander heathcote's interest regarding china i finished now he was interested more uh, not uh, very seriously interested in ming dynasty and the history of china and he was delighted that he will be able to see all those things directly other th- uh, otherwise until then he was seeing it through the books so, please write down the next question how was sir alexander heathcote received in china very important this chinese 
they have they worship the kings uh, more or less like indians only we have also a tendency of worshiping our leaders we do have we we consider them a little above us uh, that is there in our blood uh, so uh, here uh, uh, the, the, for china it is a extreme indians have but china's worship is extreme to the extreme end now you can understand that when you read through this when sir alexander arrived in peking after a journey by sea and land that took his party nearly 2 months why 2 months during those times there are no airplanes the only way people travel from country to country is seaways and it takes a lot of time seaways so it was 2 months from england to china by the time he reached peking it was 2 months he presented his seals patent to the empress zuzi it t is island there h is island there zuzi and a personal letter for her private reading from queen victoria so sir alexander is visiting china during the reign of queen victoria during queen victoria's reign and she uh, uh, i think about 40 years she ruled in it queen victoria so uh, when she when he comes in he has to hand over the seals that the british seals that he is going to use in the documents there the seals uh, to the empress zuzi and a personal letter for her private reading from queen victoria please underline those points what did he give the uh, emperor empress the empress dressed from head to toe in white and gold very ornamental the kings and all they dress very ornamentally even indian kings are very ornamental you know that uh, dressed from head to toe in white and gold received a new ambassador in the throne room of the imperial palace so that is a second point what did he do he handed over the seal pa- patents and all those things and the letter from queen victoria to this second point is uh, the queen uh, the empress uh, received uh, Sir Alexander Heathcote in the Imperial Palace, throne room of Imperial Palace. Second point, third point. She read the letter from the British monarch while Sir Alexander remained standing to attention. He was not even that. We they don't sit in front of the Empress, so he remained in the standing position while the Empress was reading the letter. the imperial highness revealed nothing of its contents to the new minister no idea what was written alexander alexander did not have any idea what was written in it only wishing him a successful term of office in his appointment she then moved her lips slightly up at the corners which sir alexander judged correctly to mean that the audience had come to an end definitely sir alexander may not know chinese language and she did not speak she just moved her lips by which sir alexander understood that finished the meeting was over she read the letter uh, she just moved the lips and wished him uh, the best wishes for his tenure as a ambassador uh, he as he was conducted back through the great halls of the imperial palace by a mandarin mandarin is a translator in the long court dress of a translator guide assistant all those things long coat dress of black and gold so that is the mandarin's dress long coat dress of black and gold sir alexander walked as slowly as possible taking in the magnificent collection of ivory and jade statues which were 